This is the Livingston Planning Commission uh, regular meeting, uh, April 9th of 2024. Um, call to order the meeting. Um, can we get a roll call, Martha, please? Roll call. Commissioner Jose Flores. Present. Commissioner Bob Wallace. Present. Vice Chair Renee Mendonca. Present. Chair Steve Bassey. Present. For the record, all planning commissioners, vice chair and chair are all in attendance. All right, let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. reviewed them and I think I can provide a motion to approve. I'll second it. All right. Um, I think we'll get a roll call. Roll call. Commissioner Jose Flores? Yes. Commissioner Bob Wallace? Yes. Vice Chair Renee Mendonca? Yes. Chair Steve Bassey? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 4 0. Speakers shall be limited to five minutes. Speakers will be asked to identify themselves and state the subject of their comments. If the subject is an item on the agenda, the chairperson has the option of asking the speaker to hold the comment until that item is called. Comments on items listed as a public hearing on the agenda shall be held open or held until the hearing is open. The commission is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda and no adverse conclusions should be drawn if the commission does not respond to public comment at this time. So the public comment period is open. And uh, Monte, do you wanna, um, something goes down if you just wanna. Yes, for the record, I wanna let everyone know that our huddle is down and that is the system that we use for, for uh, residents and to call in no. to the meeting. No emails. Okay, anybody uh, in the public that uh, wishes to make a comment at the, at the moment? Council member, we have a comment period open if you have anything. All right, cool. Okay, well, um, that closes the public comment period. Um, any written correspondence, item number five? None? Okay. Um, did we, did we already, did, yeah, didn't we already do that yeah. up on number three? I think so. Yes, we did. Yeah. You did. You just took over, yeah, just moved ahead a there. Uh, so approval of agenda, yeah. number three? Number three is approval of agenda number six. Oh, okay. Well, we just uh, made a snafu there, but we got it taken care of. Uh, number seven, conflicts of interest declaration. Members of the Planning Commission will declare an actual or apparent conflict of interest before discussions or decisions about any matters in which they or anyone whom they have a close personal relationship could directly or indirectly benefit or where such a benefit could be perceived. Any conflicts uh, from the commission that they would like to declare? No? No. All right. 
Uh, moving on to um, agenda item number eight uh, is the consent calendar. Matters listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion and one vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, a member of the public or a member of the Planning Commission may request an item to be removed from the consent calendar and will be considered separately. And there is no consent calendar. So we're gonna move on to item number nine, public hearing. Because there's no consent calendar, right? And that doesn't open up the number nine for, uh, so there's none on that. Number 10. Did you wanna say something? Okay. Uh, number uh, 10 is other matters, non-public hearing items. Uh, City of uh, Livingston 2023 Housing Element Annual Progress Report um, and the recommendation, and would you take this over or do you want me to? Well, uh, so the recommendation by um, uh, the Planning Commission of the City of Livingston uh, recommending the City Council of the City of Livingston receive it and accept the Housing Element Annual Progress Report for a calendar year 2023 and authorize the staff to submit the report to the California Department of Housing and Community Development and the Governor's Office of Planning and Research. So, um, but, okay, there you go. Yep, let's take, let's get it rolling. Thank you, Chairman. And I will go ahead and do a presentation regarding the annual progress report for the housing element, which is an item uh, that is required uh, each and every year. All right, who do I point to? That's Isn't that going? Huh? Martha, where do I point to? <laughs> Obviously, touch, pointing towards the screen does not make the thing advance. Are we not? Oh, you? I'll just, you let me know and I'll help you. Sure. You assume that I have a printout of this. Uh, if you wouldn't mind advancing the uh, slide, please. All right, a little background on, on the housing element and the requirements of, uh, of the housing element. Each year, the California cities are required to basically prepare an annual progress report on the status of implementing our general plans housing element um, and submit that report to the State uh, Department of Housing and Community Development, um, HCD as it's commonly referred to in the Governor's Office of Planning Research, or the o OPR. Uh, the annual report must be uh, provided to the city council uh, prior to transmitting this uh, report to the state of California. Next slide, please. Um, we are right now in the fifth cycle of the housing element. Uh, this is the last year uh, of, the, the, of the housing element of, of the fifth cycle. Um, and the fifth cycle was approved by the city in June of 20, June 21, the year 2016, and subsequently has been uh, had been received in certification by HCD on July 11th, 2016. Um, since then, we have been moving forward with with that. The housing element is one of seven elements in our uh, general plan, and includes basically information related to the city's existing housing needs, the analysis of the population, the employment trends the housing characteristics and basically the, the inventory of the land suitable for residential development and the progress and the programs associated with implementing the measures to enable housing within our community. Next slide, please. Um, over the course of last year, we basically received two entitlement applications requesting uh, for new housing in, in the year 2023. Uh, one of which was on uh, 1222 uh, B Street and that was for the uh, the development of a triplex, basically resulting in three uh, new dwelling units. And we also received an application from Self-Help Enterprises uh, for the B Street apartment complex, which would be an 80 unit um, affordable housing project. Next slide, please. Um, of the two entitlement applications we received, only one was approved in the year 2023, and that was the one that was on B Street, the triplex. 
so the self-help enterprise project application was subsequently withdrawn um, and therefore there are no entitlements that were approved for very low low or moderate income categories the number of home constructions actually that took place last year and completed uh, was one for one single family dwelling unit and three accessory dwelling units or ADUs uh, there were no permits uh, of those permits that were constructed uh, none were for specifically for very low low or moderate income categories next slide please this is an inventory uh, about meeting our regional housing allocation uh, requirements the what's commonly referred to as the arena it's a it's a set of uh, number of units based on various different categories from very low to above moderate income level housing um, this number is set by in, in part given by the state of california and then redefined for the various jurisdictions within the in this our case is the county of merced and we had an obligation for the fifth cycle to to provide 1025 housing units in total uh, within this community um, as you can see on the far right side of that the number of units that have been that were developed uh, through the course of this eight years uh, planning period um, which commenced in uh, 2016 and in essence is uh, culminating in the year 2023 uh, we did a, a total of 351 units um, excuse me we did 377 units of which um, nine were for low uh, income housing and 17 were for moderate and the vast majority of that being 351 units were for above moderate uh, income levels um, as you can see on the last column of this uh, certainly the city has fallen short on the number of units that they were intended to provide to comply with the arena numbers um, in essence uh, you can see those in the, in the green for each particular category of the income levels and then the total units which is 648 units uh, next slide please Um, this, this particular project, this is not defined as a project and therefore it's not subject to, to CEQA um, and thus you don't see a CEQA uh, uh, analysis as part of this uh, uh, report package or an exemption thereof. It just does not meet uh, the, the requirements as to, for the definition of a project and so again there is no CEQA documentation associated with this as none is required. Next slide please. Um, Basically, the recommendation, as it was mentioned at the onset of this uh, presentation, staff is recommending the Planning Commission adopt a resolution recommending the City Council of the City of Livingston to receive and accept the housing element uh, annual progress report for the calendar year 2023 and authorize staff to transmit the report to the California Department of Housing and Community Development and the Governor Office of Planning and, and Research. Uh, inside your packet in your staff report, you'll have some additional information pertinent to uh, our progress and how we've measured up and implementing each and every one of our implementation programs identified in our housing element. And with that, I welcome any questions that the, the dais may have. Any questions from the commission? motions to approve the resolution 2024 uh, 01 Steve before we move on I do have a question and it might have been before my time as a planning commissioner but I was under the impression that there were some apartments that were um, approved and out towards the city uh, city line out by where Yagi brothers used to be in that yep is that ever going to come to fruition is water being held up for any other building um, because of our commitment to what is going to be built and is it going to happen yeah i'm happy to answer that for you the the, the development referred to as the villages which is a 480 unit uh, right. apartment development uh, is still on the books it's still uh, it's still a valid project um, 
the applicants or proponents of this particular project has not moved forward with that. They do have a can and will serve with regards to water. They are considered in one of the elements in our, and we have had this discussion earlier um, in the prior meeting about some of our plight with water. They are one of the entities identified uh, as a, in, in a position to receive water at this time. And it's, uh, right now it's in the hands of the developer to move forward. My understanding right now, they are actually looking for potential uh, buyers uh, for that project to move it forward. But um, they have a can will serve uh, for that particular property. It uh, will expire uh, come October of this year. Mm -hmm. um, October this and year. so uh, they they're hopefully are gonna exercise that opportunity. Otherwise they will lose their water allocations and will reallocate that water okay. that we have. So if they go past or up to the October of 2024 and they can't move the project forward, then does it become like null and void? Not necessarily. No. Okay. Not necessarily. They can ask for an extension um, on their entitlements and certainly that we would review that and consider that. And in most instances, typically those would be extended. At that point, does the Planning Commission, City Council, whom is it that would say whether or not they can have the extension? That would be an administrative action. Okay. So okay. it would not come to the Planning Commission or Council. Okay, I was just questioning because I had known that um, I had heard something about it and I thought, well, why aren't they coming to fruition? You know, and Delhi is looking at a thousand new homes mm -hmm. and um, looking at a way to get that started, funded, and moving forward in that. And so just kind of looking at the big picture. Mm -hmm. So thank you for updating me on that. You're more than welcome. Any other questions, comments? Any, any motions to uh, approve this uh, resolution? I'll second that motion. Now, Martha, can we get a, a roll call for um, this resolution 2024 01? Roll call. Commissioner Jose Flores? Yes. Commissioner Bob Wallace? Yes. Vice Chair Renee Mendonca? Yes. Chair Steve Bassey? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 4 0. All right. Um, Moving on to item number 11, report of the community development uh, director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I will give you some updates what's going on in the world. Uh, hold on the video of this one for a second, if you wouldn't mind, Martha. Um, and I want to give you some updates as what's transpired at city council as well as uh, some other items too. Um, First and foremost is uh, the events at the City Council that may be of interest to the Planning Commission. On March 19th, City Council uh, directed the, our City Attorney uh, to prepare and present an ordinance uh, for City Council to consider uh, for an amendment to the Municipal Code to allow one Planning Commissioner to be residing outside the city limits but within the, city, uh, but within the Livingston Unified School District or Union School District, excuse me. Could I ask for clarification on that? Because I have somebody who has shown an interest uh -huh. as a planning commissioner. They are a large peach farmer. Mm -hmm. They owned a sweet potato packing shed. Mm -hmm. They actually reside in Turlock, one of their homes is, but they also have a home in Livingston and their office. So that would not qualify, correct? That's correct. It would have to be your domicile. Okay. It would have to be a resident of of the particular home that uh, laid in this particular case within outside of the city limits, but within the uh, Livingston Union, Union School District. Yeah, the, the second dwelling's on Robin, but he still resides in Turlock. Yeah, so they would not be eligible uh, okay. for the position opportunity. Any further questions on that particular matter? If not, then I'll move on to the next. Um, on April 2nd, uh, Council held their first reading uh, to consider and approve an ordinance uh, repealing uh, Chapter 3, on, which is the undergrounding utility districts of the Title IX, and replacing it with a new chapter, uh, Chapter 3, undergrounding utilities of Title IX. And this comes into play 
and you may have recalled and have dealt with this on particular projects where a single family home, for example, or a lot was considered for development, and the or conditions or ordinance calls out today that um, any above ground utilities that are present would have to be underground. In this particular case, this particular this ordinance would go ahead and remove that conditions for you know uh, one off, if you will, uh, uh, projects. That doesn't mean that all projects would have that luxury, but that would be for consideration. They would be uh, criteria to be set, and that's what's being uh, presented to uh, or will be can be uh, considered by the. Uh, City Council at their second reading, which is going to occur on April the 16th. Did we deal with that on B Street, the triplexes? Yes, that's a okay. great example of that. Okay. Yeah, and, and that kind of directly reflects to like, if it's like an infill project that already has um, above ground, and then why would we have them uh, do the underground? That's how the B Street project came, came to fruition. That's exactly, you're, you're correct on that. And the idea here is what is the existing con characteristics of that neighborhood? And this is really truly in the older parts of our community where we do have a fair number of overhead transmission lines for one sort or another, whether it be for power or for communications. Um, and so we don't end up with this kind of uh, sawtooth approach where you know you, you dip a line just for one lot and then it comes back up you know, for your neighboring property. It's the, the bearer of the cost of making it more affordable and more enticing to go ahead and, and do infill projects within our community. This would not apply to large subdivision developments and things of that nature. We also looked at that in our special meeting with the county on um, lots that in town that could be filled in that we could utilize for residential housing. Mm -hmm. And um, because that was a big factor is the um, running the wires underground mm -hmm. and the cost there. Mm -hmm. So, okay, good. Okay, so again, like I mentioned, it, the second reading will occur on April the 16th. Um, today, um, if uh, the County Board of Supervisors uh, uh, meeting, uh, they had a consideration for approving the consolidations and the closure of several fire stations uh, throughout the county, including the removal of Cal Fire staffing here at Station 96 in the community, and then effectively on June the 30th of this year, and then directing staff to, to alternate locations. And those stations would be Stations 64 in Cressy, uh, 91 in Delhi, and 95 in Hillmar would basically, in essence, cover the service area that would have been previously covered by our Station 96 here in the town. Um, that discussion went on today, as I mentioned, at the County Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, the board um, took a motion and, uh, and will be continuing this discussion and action at their May 7th meeting. So does yeah. that mean, and I had questions on that because of course we've been seeing it on the news and that. Um, so would they be getting rid of the fire department at Delhi and we would be servicing that or? Explain that again. That would be the opposite. They would opposite. be closing, they would no longer staff Station 96, which is the Livingston Station. Oh. And we would be dependent upon our services, whether we staff, <coughs> excuse me, our own station, or we would be dependent on other stations to cover our needs. And Delhi is thinking of building a thousand new homes too. Okay. Yeah, so um, <coughs> my understanding is that um, either, and we got fire here as well, that might have some more um, knowledge on this, but response would happen from Delhi, and we have uh, Jose or the Cressy, uh, or Cressy would be gone as well, right? No, Cressy would be still manned. So they're consolidating two stations there, so the Cressy and the Belico stations will yeah. be consolidated into one. Got it. But from what I understand from the reading also is that the outside departments, Delhi, Stevenson, Cressy, Winton, would be the ones to take over for the Livingston response area. Uh, in, yeah. in those matters. It's unfortunate and how this impacts us as a, a, a committee, right? Like, Well, yeah, I, I just have one question because, I mean, yeah. this is all coming out. You know, it's, you know, information that we have no control over because it's a, it's a county ordeal. But um, did anybody ever do a community risk analysis to determine what was the best action? Who, who determined the, why, you know, what was chosen? Because if it's based on the risk of the community, 
well, we were, we, we were the busiest firehouse for Merced County, and yet we are, this is the one that's getting reduced. So I'd fall back on that. So the people who represent us, how did they come to a conclusion that we are at the lowest risk for needing service? So to me, it's one of those things that I think that our council should really take into consideration is, well, that, that should have been a part of it, just as a de fire department to, to analyze the risk of the communities they serve and how do they best serve them. But Yeah, and then on a, on a decision-making level, right, and um, projects coming in, and now that puts another, um, I don't want to say a burden, but it, <clears throat> on us, on making decisions, like, okay, well, you're, you're continue, continuously adding, and we want business, we want growth in our communities, right? But at what cost and at what response level? How, how do we grow when we have res the pushback from other elements that the public safety, that's, that's number one, right, in, in, in my eyes, so. Yeah. Yeah. And part contingent upon the infrastructure. This, you know, obviously, in part of this, the action is, is changing the, the, the staffing at the stations from a 1-0 to a 2-0. Uh, you know, and there's value towards that end, of course. Uh, certainly able to uh, attend to emergency calls and the like. Uh, and it becomes down to a dollars issue. And truly, um, I, you know, I'm not the person here on the, on the negotiation, negotiating table to answer all the specific questions and as to why we are in this exact predicament today. Um, certainly, um, it's a cost matter. And how this is going to flesh out, I think it's going to be in part public will, who speaks loud. Um, and I think it's real important because, yeah, it will affect uh, development interest in our community. Uh, the ISO ratings can change upon you. So, your insurance rate yeah, so, uh, will change on you. Perhaps. So as we were talking about this apartment complex that's coming over on North or on Main Street, they're bringing in 20 units that are three-story buildings, and if we have no fire service to protect that, the, I, I'm sure the ISO rating is gonna just goes through the roof, and they're going to be paying premiums that are going to be probably a little ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's my take on it. I'm not. Virtually yeah, uninsurable. It's becoming insur uninsurable anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the May 7th meeting, is it going to be open to public comment? It was today. I was, was there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, if it's closed session, then no, but the, but the board meetings are open to the public. Yeah. It's, it's open. Um, obviously, they were in the mode of deliberations. They had closed the actual public hearing component. Um, I think, you know, uh, it would be in, in the county's best interest to go ahead and again reopen the public hearing component of that to entertain additional comments from um, the public and to uh, I, I think it, it caught a lot of people by surprise in this position and this discussion that was presented on the agenda so um, I, I think part of the reasons why they uh, extended it to the May 7th was allow for the public to um, getting a bit more informed of what's going on um, on this particular matter. I know that um, Board uh, Supervisor, excuse me, uh, his name has now slipped my mind, our former Espinoza, Espinoza thank you very much. Um, we'll be holding a, a, a workshop actually here in our community on the 17th of, yeah, this month, it just, just around the corner next week. And, and I would encourage the, the public again, to voice their, uh, their concerns. I, I have a, a, a recommendation or, and we have uh, council members here, well here. I would encourage staff to, um, in our mailers um, for the water bill, break it down in English, Spanish, and Punjabi, and send out the board, um, the date of the board meeting and what the impact some type of flyer impact that we have or potentially could have if 96 does close. Uh, I would suggest that um, <clears throat> because <clears throat> even having like a small town hall or <clears throat> informational meeting, okay, who's, you know, not everybody's gonna get word of it, but everybody does see the, their, their water and garbage bill. So I would, I would recommend that from staff. 
and I know we're, I don't even know how that gets processed on the staff side, but it's April 9th, right? And yeah. Um, uh, well, if there was any posting notices or anything, I'd be, I'll volunteer my building. Uh, and that could be something too. Um, the corner up there by the um, roundabout where they're slowing down. Well, or, where uh, they should be slowing down. <laughs> better yet, let's get with the school districts, uh, the school district and have them sent through the, ch uh, the kids at schools. That could be another option if we've already processed the water and garbage. Let's uh, send them to the schools because it impacts the schools as well, right? Response yep. time for medical aids and all that stuff for the schools and fire emergencies and all that. So that might be another way to get the, um, the folks. Uh, I would be willing to also post it maybe on our social media. When Ireland has a <coughs> social media page um, that hits quite a few people and to let them know. I would just need some information on the dates and that. So I have a, one thing since, as planning commissioners, how does this affect us when we're deciding the, what we're allowing to come into our community? Because I think from, from our standpoint, I think we should, we should be able to, I don't, know, I don't know how to put it into words where, you know, address it for the, to the community saying, hey, look, as Pine Commissioners, this is the struggle we're gonna come going forward if we do lose our fire station. I, I really don't know if that's a, something that we, I, I mean. that's gonna become a solved by um, prospective um, employers, um, owners wanting to come into town and build something. They're gonna look at that before they make their decision. Yeah. They may not even get to us. And, and with that, Whenever a project happens and staff, you you send out comments, right, to PD, to the yeah. fire. Who's going to make those decisions for us? Right? Like what? Someone that doesn't understand the response time within the city, or yeah, I, I just don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Typically, with uh, when projects are being distributed out for input by staff, we do send it out to the fire department of course, for comment, and we also send it, we, all, we have a fire marshal that does the plan checks uh, for certain factors, and those things will take into account, I mean, certainly. But you're, you're right on the other point that prospective uh, 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 developers, if you will, or businesses uh, will value, you know, whether we do have a fire uh, an immediate response time cap capabilities and how we are being serviced. Um, those are the types of important elements that, you know, you know, whether they are going to set up shop here in our community, whether they're going to build here in our community. Those are things that they will look at. It's just like other elements of, like of amenities, you know, whether we have parks and recreation opportunities, whether we have a, a, a robust police department, things of that nature. Those things are all valued by, by those members in the development community. I have a quick comment on that since I was there at that meeting for three hours. And I'm not sure, counting myself, I think there were two other citizens that spoke other than people on the staff. The, the, interim, the interim city manager, the mayor, we had two council members there. Um, and maybe only, to count myself, three other people. And my comment was to them, I didn't think 80% of the people in Livingston know within 60 some odd days we might not have a fire station. And then my other comment, since we have our city representative, our council member here, uh, a prior mayor pro tem was in negotiations with the county and he convinced everybody on the council not to go for it. Now, I don't know what that amount of money was on that agreement, but Council Member Roth, can we find out that one supervisor that sits all the way to the left made the comment that for years he's been, they've been negotiating with Livingston, they had a handshake agreement, and it went nowhere. And I think that's because of that prior mayor pro tem. Can the city reach out and ask them what was that handshake and what was the deal? Is it still available? <laughs> That's <laughs> I'll uh I'll talk to the city manager on that. 
Yeah, I don't know what that handshake was that the county offered, but I remember the mayor pro tem, because I used to extend all the meetings, say he didn't think it was enough money and he would negotiate with them. I don't think he ever had a negotiation one because he never got reelected. So we need to, that would be my first step to find out what, what was that offer that the county offered. And if, if that offer, would that have solved the predicament we're in now if we'd have accepted it? <laughs> that would be something that your interim city manager would, should be able to tell us or look back in the records because there should be a record of that and then we would know. And my comment to him was, you know, you got a city, Delhi, with about 10,000 people, we got over 15, and they want to close us and move somebody from Cal Fire here to there was, and then my exact words was when I first got up to the microphone was it's just stupid. <laughs> but that's just my thought. <laughs> we got another add another five thousand to that probably, Bob. Yeah. I mean <clears throat> but I was surprised that, like I said, I don't know how many people know about it. If I hadn't have caught it on one of the Livingston sites, I wouldn't have known about it. And that's kind of coming on the news, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. That's that's goes back to like I think we Nobody in the city knows. We need to be active on how do we get that, disseminate that information to the public. Yep. Right, so. That was my only comment on that. All right. Uh, anything, anything from, yeah, go for it. All right, so a little housekeeping items uh, outside of public hearing items. Uh, for one, you'll notice that your planning commission agenda has changed. Uh, a new look to it, if you will, there's a structure to it, and the purpose behind that was really to, uh, to bring it up into speed and compliance with the California government codes. There's the information that can, and that, that information that cannot be presented on the agenda. And we'll, uh, you'll find it acceptable um, and easy to follow. Uh, another item, when you back to the planning commission, the vacancies associated with vacancies, uh, we did actually receive three applications uh, for consideration for the vacancies that we have. And of course, we have one planning commission commissioner vacancy, which would term would expire at the end of 2027. And then we have two alternate uh, uh, vacancies, uh, one of which uh, the term would expire at the end of this year and the other at the, year, at the end of the year 27. So uh, that particular consideration for appointments is scheduled for the uh, city council's regularly scheduled the May 7th uh, meeting. So perhaps uh, by the time, I, I don't know whether we would be in a position to having uh, a set of new planning commissioners by the following meeting uh, that month, but certainly we probably have new commissioners for the meeting. On the horizon, uh, we are scheduled, as many of you all know, for the Joint City Council Planning Commission uh, general plan update uh, to consider and, and, and to look and review uh, alternative land use concepts, uh, build out analysis uh, with respect to the general plan. Um, there will be a series of uh, uh, land use, in fact, there will be three, uh, to what you all know, uh, they'll be presented to you. Now, the idea of that is not necessary to pick one or the other, but in the able you actually kind of do a little bit, I like uh, what I see in alternative A, and I like what I see in B, and I like a level C, and we massage the plans to get us into the direction of defining a preferred plan to move forward with further analysis of the general plan. Um, right now, it's just ideas to suggest, you know, density development, direction of growth, things of that nature to, to work through. Um, certainly, we'd move forward after that fact and begin to massage that particular plan and bring it back to the dais to see, in essence, that we have it right um, before we continue to move forward with the plan efforts. The, the other thing on the horizon, and you provided a present, presentation regarding the annual uh, uh, reporting for the housing element, we are in the midst of doing our sixth cycle uh, housing, housing uh, element uh, update. And so we are just about in a position to release a public draft of that housing element, and we'll be bringing that 
to the Planning Commission and also on the City Council uh, for the opportunity for the public to comment on that draft document. It will be out for a period of 30 days. We're targeting right now to release that document at the end of this month, April, April 29th. Uh, if all things, this is a, a multi-jurisdictional <coughs> housing element, so we are encumbered with making sure that not only we are on time, but other cities within the county and the county itself are on timely methods of getting their documents prepared. It's just the same with their component or section of that housing element and completing it in a timely manner. So, but right now the projection is to have that document being released at the end of the month of April. So, uh, certainly we'll keep you apprised as to the specific date. Uh, and whether we agree with independent hearings or another joint uh, hearing with the uh, Planning Commission and the City Council together. Okay. We'd like to do that within that 30 day public review period. Any questions on that particular? Yeah. With that, uh, one of the things you folks asked me at uh, my first uh, Planning Commission meeting you know, with you all was can you provide me an update about development in our community? So what I would like to do is present to you a PowerPoint presentation that I presented to the City Council. Uh, I give you kind of a highlight of, of project activity in our community. It does not identify all the projects, but again, just a highlight in, in areas that we are proceeding with. So again, I have to depend here on, on Martha, on, on Wink Wink, whatever it takes to go ahead and change the, the, the page. Uh, if you wouldn't mind then. The PowerPoint is not on the website, but I certainly could if you wish. Well, I'd just like to, instead of taking massive notes, I'd like to be able to have the PowerPoint for afterwards or peruse through. Sure. You don't mind? Sure, just absolutely. I can bring it on to your attention or other means of doing it. Uh, for and foremost is our general plan update. This is the long range projects, and there's a couple long range projects, of course, one of which is the general plan update. Uh, the items highlighted in blue are the tasks that have been completed thus far. As you can see, we are now moving into the phase five evaluation of alternatives, and, and we are developing those alternative land use concepts along with an alternatives report, and we'll be having that joint planning commission city council workshop on May 7th. And that will be, of course, at 5 p.m., um, 5.30, excuse me, 5.30 to 7 p.m. on May 7th. Okay. Um, the other uh, long-range project that's, that is going on, and both these projects are moving rather rapidly since they've been uh, initiated, and with particularly with the, house, with the general plan, which was on, on hold for a period of time, and then reconstituted, so to speak, here um, just at the latter part of the, uh, 2023. The housing element is also moving on a very clip, a fast clip, and because we have certain timelines to comply with, and so. Uh, uh, I'll be honest, it does consume a fair amount of my time and other staff members just the same, um, as well as the consultants who are engaged with this particular project, and there are a series of them. Um, again, the items highlighted in blue are, uh, in essence, uh, completed, or the last item is underway. Uh, we are now in the process of preparing that public review draft. Uh, the public, uh, you know, we plan to have that publication of that draft here targeting for April 29th. Uh, with public review draft hearings uh, commencing in May uh, the this coming month. Um, for as far as project activities or entitlements in our, that are being handled by the Community Development uh, Department uh, Planning Division in this particular case, are, we have four general plan amendment requests, three zoning requests, two tentative subdivision map requests, four tentative parcel requests, four conditional use permits, and five site plan design review requests and two preliminary project review requests. Now, you know, this is, a, this is ever evolving. So I would tell you tomorrow that that numbers will change. You know, I don't know exactly which entitlement requests it may be. Some go increase and some decrease. And in addition to these in particular entitlements, we have other uh, entitlements that we're proceeding with just the same that are necessary and enable development in our community. Um, but this is kind of highlight. So with that respect, so I'm going to identify some highlights based on some uh, specter of uh, projects in this particular, the industrial project. Um, and you're all very familiar with the Green Zone Industrial Park uh, project that had come before you folks. It is one, and they had to ask for a general plan amendment, 
and a tentative map sub, uh, subdivision. Um, this dais here uh, made the recommendation uh, for the general plan amendment to be approved uh, to the council and but denied the tentative subdivision map. Subsequent to that, the applicants have asked for a, um, uh, well, basically to, 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 to um, put a bit of a stoppage, if you will, um, to put a hold on the particular project until they reassess the tentative subdivision map and the issues that were presented and concerns by the public on that particular map. They are still interested in moving forward. Uh, in fact, we had a dialogue uh, meeting with them last week on the particular matters. Um, they are also aware of some of the newer issues that were not present at the given time that this project was presented to the Planning Commission, one of which was the water situation. And they would, um, would have to reevaluate re their environmental document to address some of those situations. They know they're challenged by that. They have some financial issues just the same and their abilities to move forward that project. And so that's why they've asked to go ahead and hold the project at this time. Um, as they reevaluate that, they have come up with certain schemes um, to present to the city, uh, some of which may be of value and others were not feasible uh, by its merits. I have so, a question on that side. Yes, sir. Slide, if we can go back to that one, just so everybody knows. Back to the Did they one? give you a time frame of what they're even thinking or no time frame? No, there, there was no time set for moving the project forward. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a point where they'll finally, if there is no movement on the project, it will expire. When is that point? Um, unfortunately, typically what you'd have in your, what you should have in your conditions of approval is a, is a specified uh, time frame as to if the project isn't acted upon, would expire, and usually that's 180 days, basically six months. If there's no action on the project, it deems to be a project um, that is uh, not moving forward, and it is then, it, it expires. And they, they would, the applicant would then have to start back at square watch. Thank you. Huh? Do we well, have that 180 days? We do, in this particular, no. The, the city has not used or placed something of those type of conditions in, in past projects that I can see. Like what is defined as moving forward? Um, making a concerted effort to move the project forward, meaning um, if there were uh, particular conditions that had to be reevaluated and they in fact are reevaluating that or they were asked to, to go ahead and redesign something of their project that would enable it to uh, be a considered of, 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 of a value to enable the, uh, in this particular case, the Planning Commission to make a recommendation uh, moving something forward. They could, in this particular case, <coughs> continue moving, the forward, moving forward with the project by presenting it to City Council based on planning commission's recommendations, one of which is to approve the general plan amendment um, and make their pitch in regards to uh, recommending that actually this, that the, the tentative subdivision map be approved. Uh, they have that option, um, but again, uh, where they're at right now, they feel the conditions of the project are very or onerous and, and they will not be able to meet them. And much of this is to do with um, the obligations to fulfill the infrastructure that's necessary for the project. Uh, and it, all inclusive, meaning um, the road to get, in fact, to get there, as you may, if you're familiar with that area, uh, it's not an all weather road today. In fact, it will probably force you to go ahead and get a realignment of your vehicle driving there just once. Um, second item is to go ahead and provide the extension necessary to, for sewer and water. Uh, to the property to, to enable that property to have those particular services um, on that. Again, those are very expensive items on the property. Um, what is not on the table at this point is my understanding, although though they're still considering pursuing that, is, uh, is to have a, a cannabis uh, a growth uh, operation at that site. Um, they're also looking at ways to defer um, payment of, um, of uh, fees, if you will, to the point of occupancy, um, or they defer the improvements until the point of occupancy. But some of those are issues too, and particularly like with water. If you start construction, you want to be able to, in the event that there's an emergency or a fire at the site, 
that our fire apparatus and team can actually get to the pro property safely and timely. Um, if you don't have a road that can meet that uh, ability or you don't have the water service to meet those abilities, it does put a strain on the city. Commercial development. Uh, and of course, most of our commercial development today is happening at the interchange of, of Hammett. Um, we have a series of travel centers, in fact. We have one which is referred to Maverick. Um, it is uh, both to intend to service a uh, tractor trailer and uh, vehicle fuel uh, needs, convenience stores, quick stop restaurant, um, drive through type environments. Um, and that is located on the, on the north west corner of Campbell and Hammett, and the one that's located to the south east corner of Campbell and Hammett is the Quickway Travel Center, uh, which uh, many may refer to that as Moonglow, as you've probably heard in the past. Um, so with Maverick, they're seeking a tentative uh, parcel map to subdivide that property into two parcels and securing a use permit uh, and a site plan review uh, for the property and the property designs. Uh, the Quickway Travel Center was already approved by the plan, uh, made a recommendation by the Planning Commission and ultimately approved by City Council. Um, there have been some changes to the property layout and so uh, what needs to happen is to make the corrections on the general plan map and the uh, zoning map and to which uh, today, if you if you drive in that location, you see a drainage basin uh, just adjacent to Cam, uh, to Hammett and the freeway. Uh, this project will is actually re relocating that drainage basin to the far east of the property, and the area that has part of the drainage basin would actually be developed. So that area needs to change, in essence, from a public space for where the basin is today to where and designate the area where it's going as the public space and the area that was once the basin being identified as the commercial area. That is required for them to complete prior to the commencement of phase two. Right now they're moving forward with the uh, improvement plans uh, for phase one. And we're anticipating that this project will probably come out of the ground and moving forward, moving dirt and et cetera, uh, probably in June or July of this year. The other with Maverick, they're going through their environmental review as we speak right now, so it's in their court. Any questions on those two particular projects? Just one question. Yes, sir. I believe it required the changes to putting a stoplight in the Hammett Campbell area. Is that part of the first phase? The stoplight uh, signals at Campbell and Hammett are that's funded through another mechanism, but that will be implemented at that location at the intersection of Campbell and Hammett. Um, there is ultimately a need similar to uh, what we experienced today at the Winton Parkway uh, of putting up signals at the ramps, both the northbound and southbound ramps for 99. Um, at this point, the applicants are paying. Uh, they'll be assessed a, a traffic impact fee that will go towards that expense of implementing that along with improvements to the interchange itself. Further questions? If not, we'll move on. Uh, on the Winton Park side, uh, Parkway interchange side, we have the AAA truck wash, uh, which is a tentative parcel map, a use permit, a site plan uh, consideration, which is subdividing roughly 12 acres into four parcels uh, with a remainder of a one acre area. Um, they're seeking, uh, as well as all the other projects at the, uh, at the Hammond interchange, are all seeking freeway signs. Uh, and in this particular project would be a car wash or truck wash oriented facility and an auto repair center. Um, they were moving forward and what, for whatever reasons it kind of fell apart and the tenant of the map hasn't really moved forward for some time at, uh, now. Um, this has been on the docket for a period of time. Um, they were attempting at this point just to move forward with the uh, freeway sign, but in review of that it has been considered to be an off-site sign, which is not permissible. Consideration of signage of a project is part of the site plan and design review efforts. Any questions pertinent to that particular project? Is there a date on if that doesn't move forward that 
It will expire just the same. There's a lack of interest moving forward by the applicant. Yeah. We have a fair number of projects that are, uh, in lack of a better term, gone stale that uh, we're considering about removing from our books. Residential projects. Um, you've heard a little bit about this from my last uh, presentation here, uh, the self-help enterprise uh, project, which is uh, being proposed at the uh, southeast corner of uh, B Street and the extension of Winton Parkway. Um, it's an 80-unit affordable housing project uh, consisting of one, two, and three, four bedroom, um, along with the community rec center. Uh, they initially filed an application for a general plan amendment uh, and a rezone, along with a site plan review and a few other elements. Um, they have since um, retracted that request as they are no longer uh, based on some of the <coughs> Uh, laws at, uh, at the state level that in enacted uh, in facilitating housing projects, one of which is AB uh, 2011. AB 2011 enables uh, projects that are deemed to be a, a low, very low income projects uh, to move forward as a buy right project. So no entitlements, uh, no discretionary entitlements are required of this project. They have been um, uh, relieved of that along with the environmental responsibilities. And so uh, we, in essence, are moving forward just with the review of the site plan and going right into the building phase of that. Today and for the last uh, period of time, we've been working with self-help and putting various applications, funding applications, for both state and federal monies to facilitate this project. Um, and so that is, that is now, again, moving forward. It just is something that this, uh, this dais will not see, either the Planning Commission or the City Council, uh, and provide input on it. It's strictly going to be reviewed at the building uh, plan submittal. So not even aesthetics or what? None of that stuff? They are obligated to be compliant with our, our design guidelines, and we'll review them pursuant to our design guidelines. They are also required to uh, be compliant with our municipal code. So they need to be uh, consistent with our setback requirements and height requirements and so on and so forth. This is a three-story project similar to the Terrasanta project and similar to the Villages project. They initially asked for, uh, when they submitted their application along with the general plan and the rezoning and the, and the site plan review, they had asked for variances. They had asked for variances in height. They have asked for variances in, 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 in setbacks. They had asked variances in parking, so, and so on and so forth. Well, unfortunately, um, those were all uh, discretionary items that would have been approved by uh, either the Planning Commission or that of the City Council. So those particular items are no longer on the table. They have to be fully compliant with our design guidelines as well as our, our, our municipal code. Next slide, please. Okay, so what do we have in the building department, the building division going on? What's going on right now as far as activities? Uh, we have, uh, at this point, two commercial projects and eight uh, residential projects that are now being reviewed at the building plan stage. Uh, they're being reviewed by our uh, plan examiners in the various departments to provide their input uh, at the plan check, and, and then typically a project goes at the plan check uh, comments and, and, and revisions that are then resubmitted as we refer to as back checks and sometimes it's a one back check, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three um, and then you get concerned if you're doing four or five at that point you kind of <laughs> get a little nervous about the project in its entirety at that stage but uh, and that's just in jest there. Uh, we also have uh, three commercial projects and two residential projects under uh, construction as we speak. Uh, one of which is uh, mm, it's actually the Dutch Brothers uh, project, if you haven't seen that moving on the, on the ground today. If we can do the next slide, please. Um, so building permits, as you know, uh, the Quickway Travel Center, um, that's the one I mentioned just earlier, uh, which is you know, the, the Moon Glow uh, projects that you're more familiar with. That is uh, now being reviewed at the plan check uh, status and at the, um, at the civil plans, making sure that all the various improvements are uh, acceptable and meet our specifications, and not only the city's specifications, but the California Uni Uniform Building Code, 
in the California Fire Code and other regulatory uh, requirements. Next slide, please. Uh, the Terra Santa project. Uh, we are, in fact, uh, reviewing those uh, plans as we speak. Uh, they're all due tomorrow. Uh, that's for that 80 unit affordable project that you're all familiar with that was approved in year 2020. Uh, would consist of two bedroom and three bedroom units, an on site community center, child care facilities, and the like. And where was this one at again? Was this the, B? Uh, this is B Street adjacent to um, the self help. Uh, uh, oh, that's right. Apartments okay. that are yep. present there, just at the end of development, if you will, yep. on the north side of B Street. Thank you. Um, by, by the canal. So that we do expect there on a fast track. They, they would like to take their project out to bid next month. And, and hope to have construction going this summer. And that's where they stand at this point. So it's been some time in going. Um, it took time for them to go ahead and secure all the appropriate financing that's necessary uh, to make this project a viable project. This is a project, of course, um, we'll get the credits on Arena. Um, all these projects that are now coming out of the ground that are associated like this one here, which is an affordable project. The self-help project will always give us credit on our next arena project, which will numbers, which uh, the, this coming year will be 1,096, I believe, uh, for the next eight years uh, cycle. Uh, so uh, we're, we're fortunate we'll do a little bit more robust and we'll probably be a lot better in our positioning on the number of projects approved and being consistent with our arena expectations. Uh, other construction projects are the ARCO AMPM, just about done uh, and speaking with a uh, developer today. Uh, they anticipate probably being open about three weeks from now. Um, they've got a few things to do. They are, are seeking uh, the occupancy permit. They need to complete their final inspections. Um, and, and they have a few items still yet to complete. Um, the, if you notice that the street pavement has been uh, put out there, the striping has not uh, as of the other day. Uh, they indicated they would probably be doing it today or, or come uh, the latter part of this week. You'll see a uh, uh, new striping on the roadway. Um, there's a, a, a back order on the light, the street lamp elements, and so they will be deferred uh, for another probably three more weeks before they actually see the lamp posts come up at the street edge. Uh, the landscaping improvements should be commencing this week just the same. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dutch Brothers uh, uh, Coffee Kiosk is underway right now. They're putting in the infrastructure to support that structure. Um, and uh, so that, that's uh, usually with the Dutch Brothers project, um, takes them about 60 days by the time they start construction and they open their door for business. So they're quick. They've got this down. I mean, they have their stable of team members that go up and down the state and other states to, to build those projects, and so they've got it dialed in, so to speak. So, And that is what I have for presentations for given projects, and if I'm happy to entertain any further comments that uh, you folks on the dais have. Any, any comments I, from the commissioner? Chair, I have a question. In, at a February meeting, Mr. Castillo had asked about what his timeline was for his project. It's two mm -hmm. months later. Has anything gotten back to him? Where do we stand? Yes, there is. There has been dialogue regarding uh, Mr. Castillo's projects and the projects that uh, he was trying to advocate at that time, which was the veterans project, does not uh, meet uh, the original intent of what was being proposed and is now being considered as an apartment project. The project itself would then be subject to a general plan amendment and a rezone because the property itself today is not designated for an apartment type development. Okay. Okay. Can I make a yeah, can we recognize Mr. Castillo? Um, yeah, that's fine. So, so the, my response to that is we had three paths of progress from the previous planner that just retired, the one, I'm sorry, that just left Miguel, then we had another email from his boss, and we had an email from Randy, and the project hasn't changed. I think there's just been a miscommunication, or maybe Gary doesn't see the same um, way this project was presented. I, I believe Randy was the original. He had the vision of making this project streamlined, getting it done. Um, so I, I think what I'm going to end up doing now, because uh, it's been almost three years, same thing we did with the D Street building. Um, I had to bring it to Planning Commission for, for appeal. 
So I'll, I'll, I'll fill it out this week and bring it in. So next, next uh, planning commission, I'll present it to you guys, and then you guys make the decision. Because the project, I mean, it's still, in my opinion, just when you guys go home tonight, Google conditional use permit and what, what it's used for. It's usually when a, when a county or a city or, or, or the community wants a particular project and it's not zoned for that, uh, conditional, uh, a conditional use permit allows you for that. And that was the way uh, Randy proposed to, to streamline that project. And again, it's been three years, um, should have been built by now. Um, so I think that's, that's the plan. I'm gonna present it as a, to the planning commission. I'm gonna submit an application this week to, to do an appeal and I'll, I'll present the information we have and you guys make a decision. So that's where we're at with that project. Mr. Casino, where is that property located at? It's the Mason building next to the Veterans Hall. Uh, the bus barn, next to the bus barn? Okay. Right across the street Sometimes from the high school. You, oh, that empty building. Yeah, it's yeah. been okay. empty for a while. Yeah, so, and, and again, it's a pretty straightforward project. I mean, I, it, again, if, I, if that project would be in any other city in, in this county or even county up north, I mean, they, they would make anything possible to get it done. When you say a veterans, uh, for veterans, is it housing? Is yeah, it the, services? The, the, the proposed uh, project is an eight, one bedroom, one bath. They're, they're about approximately 500 square feet, repurposing the existing building, so no addition would be added. It would be in, in the same footprint that's there. And then we, we'd be working with uh, the housing authority out of Merced to, to get the uh, veterans uh, their housing vouchers. And then we'd also be working with, uh, the, with them and a few other organizations in the property management to help them with any services they might need, like transportation, like medical, psychology. So the know. tenants would be vetted by the veterans? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. very similar to a, uh, like a Section 8, but more for veterans. And the okay. services would be coordinated between the property management company and the different services uh, provided uh, in the county and the state for veterans. So they're, they're, we're not... Um, it's not, we're not, we're not limit, limited to certain services, whatever service is available and whatever um, the veterans need that we're, we're mm -hmm. gonna assist them with there, that's the plan. And then from talking to the gentleman that runs the, the veterans hall next door, the idea is these, these would be members of the veterans hall next door. So, you know, when they have their monthly or bi-weekly uh, yeah. events, they would be, you know, they would help, they would participate, they would help with the maintenance of the veterans hall. And actually him himself mentioned that he might be even interested in one of the, or some people within that that are already, uh, uh, involved with the veteran, uh, with the veteran hall, would be interested in possibly applying for one of the units. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'll be. Gl I, I'd like to see that project. Yeah, me, me, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. like I said, I've, I've been trying to get this for three years. So I think that's uh, at this point, that's that's my re response to Gary's comment because I sat with him twice, and and hit the the short of it is that his proposal is, it, 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 it's more expensive on fees. It's it's more t lengthy in time. Um, and, and, it, and really, there's a way. Of, there's a way. I mean, there's a way of, uh, to do it because, like I said, the previous three planners uh, agreed that that was the way to do it. So, okay. And, and my comment, just for the, the and I, I've, I've spoke to other developers, and their, their response is very similar to us. Not all of them. I mean, I've, I've done stuff here in Livingston <clears throat> that doesn't. It's not as brain damage, you can say. But my, my feedback to you as a resident, as a developer, is if you guys want more housing, more projects, the reason some of these are stale is you got to make the process easy. Like I've been busy with. Other, other cities, I just had one approved today in Modesto, got approved in another four weeks. Very, so it was, I mean, every, everybody up and down the state wants housing. I mean, everybody wants it. Nobody says they don't want housing, but then they put you through the ringer as a developer, you're gonna go through wherever it's easier for you. So, like I said, the response, my, my feedback from, what, from the two times that I sat with Gary on that veterans project, it wasn't the least path of process, it wasn't the, pro, the path with the least uh, restrictions. It wasn't definitely not the path with least fees because his his suggestion was four times the fees that Randy uh, recommended. So if you tell me that as a developer, how is that being friendly to a developer? I mean, you can say you got on housing all you want, but if you're not making it easy, I mean, no one's going to come. And if you look at the amount of units you guys are going to need, I mean, it's if you guys not you necessarily, but if if in general the government doesn't act and make it easier, that's why that. 80 units, they streamlined it because the state sees that hey, some of these cities and counties are not making it easy. So, hey, we're not going to give you the option. We're just going to get them through. The same thing would happen with ADUs. ADUs are now allowed because the state says, hey, we got to get some of this housing done if the cities and, and counties don't, don't want to act or move. That's, that's why some of these rules happen. And the thing with housing, you were asking about these apartments. I mean, even if we start an application today, most of the time it takes, you know, one or two or three years to get these projects off the line. This eight-unit veteran housing, I mean, very simple project. I can have it built in six months from when I get permits. It's been on the pipeline for three years. Three years, it's been sitting vacant. Mm -hmm. so, so my feedback is, you guys, if you guys are truly 
interested in, in helping or <clears throat> the residents of, of Livingston make the process easy. I mean, in, in, in invite uh, developers or, you know, make it, a, make it to where it's streamlined and, and not necessarily like, hey, well, yeah, we want housing, but we're going to make you go through the ringer for it. I mean, we're going to, everybody else, including myself, are, are going to uh, be more active where it's easier to conduct business. So, and again, and, and, and here locally, if you look at it, our, uh, there's a lot of pressure on rents. There's a lot of pressure on housing. We have no inventory. I mean, if you start today, you're not going to see a difference for probably 12, significant difference, I would say 18 to 24 months. And if, you know, so the sooner you guys start acting, the sooner you guys get some inventory. So, thank Appreciate you. that. Well, thank you for addressing our con your concerns in that, and thank you for understanding our position. Uh, if I may close on that, in all fairness, I, Mr. Casillo, up until January of this year did not have a formal application in with the city. What he had was a pre-application request. Mm -hmm. And it was, in fact, uh, not necessarily what we see today in design. One of the factors also you have to take in consideration when looking at for affordable projects, whether it's veterans or not, is whether you are going to go ahead and do deed restrictions to ensure that, in fact, the project will be committed to affordable housing for a period of 40 years. Mr. Casillo was not interested in pursuing that. So thus, you have to look at it from a conventional apartment development. On, on real quick, on um, if we're going to bring this up, and I don't, I, I'm sorry, Diego, I don't want to interrupt you, but if we're going to bring it up in that fashion, I'd rather have it, you know, like all these comments and all that addressed during uh, that hearing instead of uh, not having it on the, you know what I mean, agenda and all that stuff. I think it's a proper forum for that day. Um, whenever you do, um, open, open to listening, okay? So I apologize, but... Yep. Nope. Yeah, yeah, you're good. All right. Understood. Cool. All right. So, anything else, uh, Gary? Uh, no, that that's the end of my uh, uh, report for. All right. Commission I appreciate that. That was nice and thorough. Um, that was nice. Uh, I like that. Um, the PowerPoint um, that kind of helps us visually see it as well, not just you know verbally hearing it. So. Um, I, I'm sure that my colleagues uh, agree as well. Yeah, I was making the comment, um, as a new commissioner, a lot of these projects I had no idea were in the, yeah. in the pipeline at all because I wasn't here for that. So seeing it now at least gives me an idea of where we're going and that, I appreciate it, thank you. All right, that one takes more, us. I have one more question, oh, Steve. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, goes back to the prior director. Between Robin, Lilac, and Peach, where that truck is, there's, they've made their own little truck parking area. Um, I know there's contaminated stuff there because the city told me that, but I've had a meeting over six months ago with our interim city manager, never got an answer to that. It's been before it was presented to the can planning I, commission. Can I cut years you back, off real quick, yeah, Bob? It would be one of our areas that would be open for apartments to development, okay? Is that, it's in the county right now, but it was, it was, it's considered annex, we could annex it and put apartments in there. I guess somebody had mentioned it once, but it was mentioned at a planning commission meeting. My question is, is it a legal truck stop and repair in, on that man's land that he's contaminating that the city was thinking of annex later? What? How, how long, how does it take six, seven months to find out if they have a county permit? Gary, prior to that, can I open up 12? And it kind of fits better in that. If we open up 12 for the planning commissioner reports and announcements. Okay. And then we'll just, and that's, that works, just hold that real quick and then Gary can answer. <laughs> so <clears throat> moving on to item number 12, we're going to open up that. Planning commissioners, any reports, announcements, future agenda items. And Bob. Um, nope, I already yours. said it. So yep, you're good. So that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I jumped ahead. No, and if you'd like me to answer, this is the first, this is bringing 
to my radar here about, and I certainly will go ahead and investigate that. It's, if it's in the county, um, yeah, I would suspect the property is zoned for agricultural purposes and not for commercial uh, use. Um, and I don't know the status of the types of trucks there. Certainly, for annexation-wise, we're kind of hamstrung. This is one of the reasons why development is lacking here in our community, and is because we don't have a tax sharing agreement, which precludes us from annexing properties. Uh, I do feel, or the planning department does feel, uh, calls on a regular basis about wanting to annex lands in our community, and we just don't have the means to do that today. Um, it's just it, taking one annexation at a given time uh, would be virtually and an impossible journey for the developers in kind and the agreements and the, uh, you know, the efforts that would be um, asked upon that on the, on the Project Pacific, let alone um, the county and LAFCO itself would not be supportive of the annexations at this, at this time. So absent the tax share and agreement being in place, um, the ability is probably to annex that piece of land is, is far remote. Um, but I will certainly look at the, that particular property, reach out, and if it's a, something that I need to bring the attention to the county, I certainly do so, so that they can address a visa, uh, their code enforcement officer, uh, to bring, um, if it is a, a, a non-conforming use or an illicit use on that property, we'll certainly go ahead and get the, that rectified at this point. Certainly if it's an issue that is causing contamination to the soils, or that of, of or streams that uh, would lead into either a canal or some other body of water, we would not want to have fair that. That would just add more con mm -hmm. con uh, conflict with that piece of property and the surrounding properties if it's leaching into the ground um, and traveling uh, beneath surface, depending what's being disposed They've removed of all the trucks, although, and that had been gone for quite some time. However, day before yesterday, there was a truck parked in there again. Um, a sleeper truck with a 53-foot trailer attached to it. And I thought, oh, no, they're bringing trucks back in. You're talking about the site on Main Street? Um, B Street. B Street. Yeah, B Street. Yeah. Right, the one um, we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Martha, isn't that a city property? 164 B Street is in city property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not so, a county one that... Uh, no, mine's in the county. Yeah. He's talking oh. about the one on Robin. Oh, on and, Robin. Robin. Oh, okay, between Robin. Lilac the and... The side street okay. is Lilac. You go by Lilac. Oh, God, we got another one. Heading up to one. Peach. George we Peach. got another Big one. Area. Okay. Yeah, there is an application, just a FYI, folks. So there's a free application request for the, 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 what was, people parking the trucks on that property on B Street. On B? Right adjacent to the school. So we will be uh, commenting on that and we'll be circulating it, that out. They change oil. They do yeah. overhauls there. Yeah. That's, that can't yeah. be. Yeah. It's parking's yeah. one thing, but, right. you know, the, uh, the changing and the maintenance and all that stuff yeah. is a different. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, just for, for your edification, um, truck parking isn't permissible in commercial properties. It's not permissible in residential properties. You can have your uh, tractor, meaning your cab, parked in, in, in your area of residence, but you can't have tractor and trailer right. uh, at the, in residential areas. Uh, nor can you park um, uh, tractor and trailers in commercial designated areas. They are permissible in industrial zones, uh, but that is about it. The land that's on B Street is not zoned for, com uh, for industrial at this point in time. Unless the business offers the parking, like TA. Yeah. Yeah, to, well, if you wanted just to use the property to park trucks, in other words, yeah, did a business and wanted to park a series of trucks on there for, for uh, uh, monetary gain, would not be permissible on, a, on lands that are designated commercial. Really? I have one item that I'd like to bring or ask. Um, in our area, we have quite a few pigeons. And we all know what pigeons can do, especially when you have solar and everything else. I have a neighbor who every day is out there dropping massive amounts of bird feed to feed them. Is there any rules against any of that? Maybe not, but I have noticed the amounts of pigeons three times what we used to have. And it's like, where are they coming from? Then I'm watching these people 
put out food and they come and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't think they know what they're creating. Yeah. Um, is, is there a, a rule that says we can't feed pigeons? No, that's not uh, on the books most likely and I can't say that for 100%, but I suspect it's not. Um, not I know some cities do have however, rules. However, um, um, there are nuisance uh, ordinances and if this becomes a nuisance and then it becomes a public health and safety issue, then it becomes a, a, a violation of that. Um, and usually in this particular case, you would you engage with the, the county uh, environmental health department uh, on this matter. Certainly, uh, you know, we can, you know, it's, it first becomes a civil matter, you know, neighbor right. to neighbor, you know, please you know, being respective and kindly and suggesting that they abate uh, I haven't said anything feeding the uh, pigeons. You don't like to do that with your neighbors. You, you, you have to live next to them and understood but um in the morning when she feeds them and in the afternoon i'm literally talking a thousand pigeons will be out there and it's like what are you doing so you said county health yeah um i can i can follow up on that and get you some direction and how I would best appreciate address it, it. As being a neighbor and doing it in a more neighborly approach uh, i would appreciate it the the feces in that, I know pigeons can cause cryptococcal meningitis. Mm -hmm. I've had work comp cases where that's happened. Yes, and it's all from pigeon feces. So, and when it's all in the streets that children playing in that, and it's like, ugh. So, if you could just give me a little direction, I'd appreciate it. They, they, they may refer you back to the code enforcement here, just, just FYI. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's most likely what's going to happen. I'll do a, a courtesy call and just indicate that there has been some issues raised by the neighborhood. Because, yeah, there's the health component about it, but it's also damaging to uh, private property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pigeon dung, if you will, so to speak, um, is not good to paint um, no. vehicles, nor your home or other pieces of ma uh, materials in your home, be it, you know, an awning, an umbrella other things it just it just just damages it um and you know if you got thousands actually showing up you don't really feel comfortable about relaxing in your yard uh, for that matter in essence you can't and so those are some of the concerns raised i relish the day we saw a falcon in our area and he was hauling <laughs> him off right and left <laughs> you had to bring in some falcons <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's something, it's some, you know, sometimes we do the remedy and, and then we look at how to solve the remedy because the remedy now gets yeah. out of control. Uh, but yeah, uh, but we, I will uh, have staff take a look into that and then get back to you uh, how best to go ahead and, and address that and or uh, who to contact on some matters. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from... Um, so any reports from the commissioners announcements i know we've been a while but i i do have one other issue um emerald textiles mm -hmm. um was is there anything or when that came to fruition and they were allowed to bring their business in the water that they're using was that ever metered and how much you're going to use and um is anybody monitoring that from the little i know about that particular project uh, it's been um they are a high water user in fact they're second to foster farms um and th there were some um issues pertinent to metering on that they're actually determined how much water they were using and so that is being abated as we speak okay. um they they uh, are subject to some certain entitlement issues uh, and some corrective measures just the same. So that is on the radar. City staff has been working with them as they slowly put, you know, improvements to that particular property as, as you know, expanded mm -hmm. um, and having to address some of these matters. But, you know, water, they, we had problems with uh, particular, uh, you know, basically a lint getting in our system it was also clogging up uh, our mm -hmm or sewer, so that, that had to be addressed. But uh, yeah, um, 
uh, I think there's a couple lessons learned that the uh, city is engaged with respect to that, that uh, business. I've had some concerns from the um, Portuguese hall down the street mm -hmm. on Main Street. Um, they brought in their water bill. It's running about $2,500 a month. Wow. And um, <laughs> they say they can no longer pay it. And the donations aren't coming in like they used to in that. And that's been a piece of Livingston for 100 years. It appears that most of their water is going to the lawns, which the sprinklers come on three times a week or two times. And um, yet they're being charged for sewer on there. Now that building will be rented out maybe three times a year for events. So they're, they're at a loss at what they need to do. And they don't really want to shut that building down or walk away from it. Seems like a very high. That is, they brought me the bill. Wow. Yeah. $500 a month? A month. I, that was for a yeah, month. Yeah. Um, I, and I can't answer, to be honest with you, about how city uh, Livingston op, uh, manages their uh, utility bills, but often uh, your, your your sewer um, bill is uh, is kind of in a sense connected to your water consumption. There's a percentage that is assumed that is being used for domestic purposes and a percentage used for irrigation. Um, this is a concern sometimes when people have pools. When they fill pools, also their sewer bill goes up because the volume of water uh, that you use, again, proportionally, is assumed the, the vast majority of it is actually used uh, uh, for domestic potable purposes and, and disposing of our sewer system and then having to be treated at a wastewater treatment plant. So, uh, and there may be a need to go ahead and reassess uh, how the water is being used there. And the Atwater has done it for their Portuguese Hall. And, that, and that's where they're coming to, wanting to know where they need to go so that maybe they can be reassessed and so that where they can, it can be affordable. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll reach out to the city staff and ask for, and to, to find out who would be best to be addressing this matter and see if we can, how and we can address this matter to Can recognize I send you the, the contact last information of, of the board member that is addressing it for the hall, or yeah, if you could, if you could send me that information, the contact that would be fantastic. Uh, so we have a point of reference and who to reach out to, and then work out uh, this: uh, how do we can better manage the water and water bill uh, associated with that property. Well, the other question, the other comment I would make on that, have they hired someone to come and see if there's an underground leak? That's true. They have, there hasn't been a spike really in the usage. It's just that the bill has always been extremely large and it has gone up since October, but I did consult with the, oh, I, his name escapes me, I'm sorry. I have his card on my desk that keeps coming in. He's a Portuguese gentleman in that. And um, they said there's been nothing. Uh, they've dug up a few lines and that, but they can't find anything. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, certainly I will reach out to the staff to address you know, this particular water bill. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Well, that's yeah. a lot of money. Just. Jose, you have something? Yeah, just, All right. I know we're talking about the fire department, but the volunteer department is actually holding a packing breakfast May 4th mm. from eight, it's holding it from 7, a, 7 a.m. to 11, and all the funds collected stay in the community, so yeah. it just supports our local community, so. Yeah, please support, that's, that's, that's good. May 4th, what huh? What day was that, then? May 4th. May the 4th be with you? Yes. <laughs> so we'll have our lights in. May the 4th be with you. And then um, I have um, just, um, I don't know who from the commissioners is attending, but that uh, April 18th is the city county relations dinner. Yes. Oh. Jose and uh, Renee. I am. You? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I I'm not going to be in town, so I didn't, um, I didn't put myself down. I don't know. Uh, Bob, are you? I already said I Yeah. Okay, I confirmed so, with okay, myself. Good. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. That's all I have. Okay. No one else? Mm -hmm. 
Going once, going twice. All right, <laughs> All right we're going to adjourn at 829.